So what I want to do is just have a little bit of a look at some of these and see if we can identify some very important factors that contribute to either our um, environmental, our social, or our economic um, implications when we're looking at processes like this. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to get the sulfur out of the ground. And this is a nice little um, visual learning aid from Nelson that I thought would be quite useful just to give you a bit of an overview of the actual production process for sulfuric acid. So we start with our sulfur, which we've extracted from the Earth's crust, and that can be done either through um, uh, smelting of ores, or it can also be done through the fresh process, as I talked about um, earlier. What we then want to do is we want to combine the sulfur with oxygen in order to produce sulfur dioxide. Now, this naturally will occur in the atmosphere, particularly if we've heated up the sulfur to uh, melt it, to turn it from a solid into a liquid and then bring it to the surface. Often it, if it will do that inside of um, some water, so often very hot, high pressure water. Um, so it's already very warm. We know the reaction rate increases with increasing temperature. So there are some environmental implications if some of the sulfur does this in the atmosphere. Because it will go through exactly the same process, just not in a controlled way, and will end up with um, acid rain as a very important um, environmental consequence. So that's what happens if we don't control the process. If we do control the process, hopefully what we're able to do is to um, use the contact process to move the sulfur dioxide towards sulfur trioxide. Uh, this is an equilibrium. So it's going to have some important consequences, particularly economically, as we work out how we maximize our um, yield while we maintain aspects of industrial safety and also environmental uh, responsibility. So you want to make sure that you've talked a little bit about each of those. Now, one of the interesting things here is this product oleum. And you can see what we've done in order to do this is to add some uh, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, to our sulfur trioxide. So if you just add all these like terms, we've got two hydrogens, we've got two sulfurs, and we've got three and four, which is seven um, uh, oxygens. And this is what produces our oleum. Now, oleum is much safer to be using. Uh, often the sulfuric acid can be produced as a mist because we're going to be adding water to get it straight straight down in this direction. So we will also add water to our oleum and that means we'll have um, H4S2O8 which is two lots of H2SO4. So that's where we can take our oleum add it to water, it's a little safer for us to produce our sulfuric acid as our final product. When you're looking at any of these industrial processes, there's actually a lot involved in them. And I've kind of skated very quickly across the top because I want you to start to look at some of these processes, do a little bit of reading, think about them in the context of those very important factors that we've been looking at that are critical to your understanding of any industrial process. Remember what we want to do is one we want to look at availability, availability of reactants or of reagents. We also want to look at reaction conditions. We're interested in yield and and purity. We're also interested in industrial use and how these can be um, expanded to increase demand and also as we've looked at finally some of these broader issues. It's interesting too to have a look at how chemistry is continuing to change. We talk about atom economies, we talk about green chemistry now. We're much more environmentally aware than we used to be about the sorts of impacts that chemical reactions have on the environment and on ourselves, on our populations and on the areas in which we live. So we're trying to be much more sensitive now to what are the implications of each of these different types of industrial processes and how we make sure that we consider all of the issues and all of the factors that contribute 